Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Betty. Now, thanks for calling, but I'll have to skip this one, Angel. Yeah, I'm involved with a little character who has an idea he's a lady killer. And I have to see to it that he doesn't take it too literally. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Neighbor's Nightmare. In just a moment or two, we'll join the Falcon for his latest adventure. But first, I'd like to tell you ladies how you can make delicious snacks and sandwiches, salad toppings and appetizers more quickly and easily than ever. Just make them with those wonderfully handy Kraft cheese spreads. There are nine grand varieties, you know, some sharp-tasting and others delightfully mild. But all are delicious and, of course, of the finest quality because they are made by Kraft. And for years, Kraft has been famous for foods of the finest quality. Try some of these handy helpers tomorrow. Take home several of the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. It's late Sunday night. And at one of New York's most expensive hotels, short, baldish Gordon Daly is asleep in his room when there's a loud knocking on his door. Daly sits up, fumbles for the bedside light, then staggers sleepily to the door while putting on his bathrobe. At the door, he stops and puts his head close to it. Who, who is it? I have the room across the hall. I must talk to you. Well, it's late. Uh... Yes, I know, but please open the door. I, I'm afraid. Afraid? Why? Open the door, I'll explain. Just a minute. Now, what is... Let me in, please. But I... It, it, it's late, and I uh, suppose, I mean, somebody this time of night... Uh... Just for a minute till I collect myself. Well, all right. Thank you. I know this seems strange, and when I explain, you're going to think I'm silly. Uh, am I? I'm afraid so. You see, I... I had a nightmare. Oh, I was afraid to be alone. Isn't that childish? Well, uh, I guess so. I get so frightened, I just can't stand it. Look, do you have a cigarette? Oh, yes, just a minute. Hey, you are. Thank you. Look how my hand's still shaking. Well, here, I'll, I'll light it for you. There. I saw you on the elevator and coming in here a few times. You look, well, understanding. And when I get these awful dreams... Oh, I, I know how you feel. I've had nightmares. It's really my own fault. I should have put the money in the bank instead of splurging. What? You see, I've never had much all my life. And then all of a sudden, to have $25,000, it's like coming into a fortune. Did somebody leave you money? No, I made a lucky investment. You see, I'd saved up a few thousand dollars over a period of years. And oh. then I heard of this opportunity, a new process for refining oil... So I put in all my savings. And you took out $25,000? Yes, in just a few months. I probably should have left it in. I might have been really rich. But 25000 seemed like rich to me. I bought furs and jewelry, and I'm living here. Well, your 25000 won't last long at that rate. Well, I may reinvest some of it, but I want to have my fun first. Yes, I see how you feel. The only trouble is I never had anything before. I was always so careful. That's how I saved up the few thousand I had. 
So now with my room full of expensive things, I keep getting these nightmares that somebody's trying to break in and rob me. Yeah, but uh, now about this investment... I get so frightened I... when I have those dreams. I suppose it's because I... Oh, listen to me rattling on about myself. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bore you. Oh, you didn't bore me. You're uh, kind. I knew you would be. This investment, a new process you said for refining oil... Well, let's not talk about that now. Maybe tomorrow, if you'd care to see me. Oh, may I uh, May I take you to lunch? Oh, I'd be delighted. You know, maybe this was a lucky accident. I don't <laughs> know many people in New York. Well, now you know me. I... I think maybe we'll turn out to be good friends. I know we shall. <laughs> yeah? Uh, how do you do, sir? Am I in the right place? <laughs> well, look, pal, I'm a detective, not a mind reader. Oh, then I am in the right place. This is the address I was given, but I expected an office building, not an apartment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are uh, Michael Waring, the gentleman they call the Falcon? Well, you're two-thirds right. Oh, what? I'm Michael Waring. I'm called the Falcon. But about the gentleman, well, there are various opinions about that. Oh? Well, may I come in? I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Well, Mr. Uh... Uh, Daly. Gordon Daly. Daly. Gordon Daly. What can I do for you? Uh, I want you to investigate someone for me. Uh, Mr. Barnes. Uh, Harold Barnes. Mm-hmm. And what's this Barnes, uh, Harold Bonds done? Well, I invested $15,000 with him a month ago, and something's come up. I need my money. I've asked him for it, but he keeps putting me off. And you think he's pulling a fast? I'm not sure what he's pulling. That's what I want you to find out. Well, how come you invested with him in the first place? Well, you see, uh, Muriel, a friend of mine, put her money in Barnes' company, and she made a fabulous profit. <laughs> fabulous is a nice word for it. Uh, just how good a friend is this Muriel? Oh, very good. Uh -huh. For how long? Oh, about a month. Mm-hmm. She crooks the finger, you rush in and uh, get stung. Oh, huh? Now, 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 don't get the wrong idea about Muriel. She's a nice girl. Oh, no doubt. She wouldn't lie to me. No, of course not. She claimed dealing with Barnes is profitable for her. Well, I'm sure it is. A nice, fat profit for every sucker she lands. Now, you're wrong. Well, in that case, do you still want to hire me? Yes, but you'll find out how wrong you are. All right. You're thinking of this as a swindle, but it's not. Barnes meant to pay off, I'm sure of that. He did pay off to Muriel, but now something's happened and he's stalling. Apparently, he's hard-pressed for cash. Mm -hmm. Well, if Mr. Barnes is so hard-pressed for cash, I think I'll offer him some and see what happens. Oh, you're interested in investing with us, hmm? That's right, Mr. Barnes. And you say Mr. Daly recommended us? Mm-hmm. Oh, strange. To be perfectly frank, Mr. Daly hasn't been too happy with us lately. Oh, well, he's not afraid of getting his money. It's uh, just a matter of time. He happens to need it now. But me, I'm in no hurry. So uh, if you'd care to outline the proposition... Oh, I'd be glad to, Mr. Uh, Warren, did you say it is? That's right. Oh. Are you sure you didn't mean Waring? What gives you that idea? Don't be so modest, Mr. Waring. The Falcon is a famous man. And the cops and robbers set... Which are you? Well, I can't pretend to be a cop. As for the other, that's what you're trying to find out, isn't it? Yeah, and this conversation seems to give me my answer. But not your proof. Well, I imagine any fair to middling accountant could take care of that. Why not get one and see? That's a good idea. Well, so long, Barnes. Sorry I bothered you. Oh, that's all right, Waring. Oh, uh, but before you go... Yeah? Take this! Come on in, Muriel. I've almost finished packing. Say, where are your bags? I haven't packed yet. Why do you want me to drop by here? Because I wanted to know what happened. I thought you were going to keep Daly in line. I said I'd keep him happy. He's happy. Yeah, so happy he hires a detective. Well, he's a cautious type. Well, this is the end of the line. With wearing on us, we've got to move. We were stretching it pretty thin anyway. One of the suckers was bound to get restless. We're just lucky we have time to pull up stakes. But we'd better hurry. That gun butt's not going to keep wearing asleep all day. Nah, you shouldn't have slugged him. You'd bluff. What's to bluff? He could smell the setup. You didn't have to tip that you knew him. You could have played along. That would have given us more time. We have enough time if we don't waste it gabbing. All right. All right. Where's the cash? 
In this suitcase. How much does it come to? Oh, somewhere around 80 grand. That's 40 apiece. Not bad. I was counting on more. Well, if Daly hadn't got itchy... I'm not interested in ifs. I want cash. You'll settle for what's here. Not 40. I have plans. They call for big money. Now, don't get the idea I'm cutting you in for more than half. Oh, I'd never make that mistake, Barnes, knowing you. So I'll have to do my own cutting. I'll settle for 80. What? I said I'm taking the full 80. You're out, chum. If you don't believe me, maybe this gun will convince you. Hey, now, kid, wait a minute. I don't have a minute. So get out of my way. I'm taking the bag. That's what you think. No, don't think. Oh, oh. You fool. Why did you make me do that? <laughs> Oh, Muriel, there you are. I've been waiting since six. I know, I'm sorry. I'm so late. Something awful happened. Yes, I can see you. You look like you've had another nightmare. This one's real. I've got to talk to you, but I don't want anybody to hear. Oh, there's a table in the corner. All right. Ah, I, uh, I see Mademoiselle has arrived. Uh, you wish to be seated now, Mr. Uh, yes, please. That table over there, if we may. Oh, certainly. You said you got here at six, Gordon? Uh, yes, that's when our reservation was for. And you gave your name when you arrived, didn't you? Uh, yes. Yeah, good. Uh, this table, monsieur? Uh, that's right, thank you. And uh, before we order dinner, I think we'd better have a uh, double brandy for the young lady and a glass of sherry for me. Uh, yes, monsieur, right. Yes. Thanks, Gordon. Well, now, uh, what's wrong? It's terrible. You've got to help me. I'll try. I knew you would, darling. You're wonderful. Well, now, Gordon, I... Gordon, I... Mr. Barnes phoned me. He said he wanted to talk to me at his apartment. His apartment? Yes, he said it was very important, so I went. But when I got to the door, I heard arguing inside, and then a shot. You you mean a, a shot? Yes. And then the door opened, so I hid on the stairs, and I saw Peter Somerset come out and go to the elevator. Who's Peter Somerset? Oh, he's someone who invested with Mr. Barnes, too. Oh, I see. Well, uh, then, did did you go in? Yes. It was awful. Mr. Barnes, he was dead. De oh, dear, that means my, my money is... You never know. Maybe Somerset took it. Uh, excuse me, uh... Brandy for mademoiselle, sherry for monsieur. Oh, yes. Thank you. Not at all. Well, Gordon? Well, we'll have to tell the police about Somerset. Well, that's, just, that's just it. I can't. I don't dare. They might think I killed Mr. Barnes. Why should they? Well, they jumped to conclusions. I was there at the time of the murder. That's what's so awful. I was thinking, Gordon... I know it's a lot to ask, but I was thinking... Yes? Well... The shooting took place at 6.15. You were here in this restaurant. You got here at 6. The waiter saw you. You have a perfect alibi. Well, yes, but what's that? Well, for? suppose you say that you were at Mr. Barnes tonight at around 5.30. And as you were leaving, you saw Mr. Somerset go in. Oh, I couldn't do... Well, Mr. Somerset was there. I saw him. And you're in the clear as far as the murder goes because you were here when it happened. I know, but a thing like that... For me... I, I don't know what to say... Look, Mr. Waring, he's a detective. If I tell him what you saw, oh, no, maybe... Oh, no, no, he... no, no. You mustn't tell anyone that I was there, especially a detective. No, if you won't help me, I'll... Oh, you know, I'll help you. But if there's only some other way... There isn't any other way. The only way you can help me is to say you were there yourself. All right, Muriel. I was there at 5.30. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley again, friends. Well, it looks like Muriel is a girl with ideas. And here's an idea for all you folks who really like good salads. An idea for a wonderfully different salad dressing you can make easily. Just empty a glass full of Roca cheese spread, one of the nine delicious cheese spreads made by Kraft, into a little bowl. Then use that empty Roca glass to measure out an equal amount of Miracle Whip salad dressing. Blend the two together, and the result is a delightfully different salad dressing. Creamy, smooth Roca cheese spread has a zesty blue cheese flavor that's unusually delicious, really tantalizing. And for wonderful snacks and sandwiches, try Old English brand and smoke hell and Kraft cheese and bacon spread, too. But, of course, you'll want to try all nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. 
Look for them in colorful tulip-designed drinking glasses you can use again and again. And remember, the Kraft cheese spreads are so delicious that they've become America's favorites. So, enjoy the best. Tomorrow, get several of the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. They're America's favorites. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Gordon Daly agreed to save Muriel's neck by placing himself at Barnes' apartment at 5.30. Now he's phoning the Falcon. Hello. Hello, Mr. Waring. This is Gordon Daly. Oh, yes, Daly. I'm glad you called. I've been trying to reach you. Well, I saw Barnes for you. Looks bad for your money. He plays dirty pool. I've got the head to prove it. What? Uh, he slugged me and skipped. I called in his description to the police. They're looking for him. What? Well, they found him. I just heard on the radio he's been murdered. What? Yes, that's why I'm calling. I think I know who did it. Yeah, who? Uh, Mr. Somerset. Peter Somerset. How do you know that? I saw him. You see, I went up to Mr. Barnes' apartment this afternoon. You went up there? Uh, why? Well, uh, he phoned and asked me to. What did he say when you got there? Uh, nothing much. He asked you to go over so he could tell you nothing much, huh? Look, why are you asking me all these questions? Aren't you working for me? Well, I thought so, but you seem to be taking matters in your own hands. Well, but Barnes asked me. Uh-huh. That's the truth. As long as you're so skeptical, before you get the idea I had anything to do with the murder, I want you to know I was in a public restaurant in front of witnesses at 6.15 when the murder was committed. I see. Now, how come you know when the murder was committed? What? Huh? Oh, that, that, that was on the radio, too. Well, if you weren't at Barnes' at 6.15, how come you're so sure Somerset is the murderer? Well, uh, I'm not sure, only he was there. At the time of the murder? I don't know. He just went in as I was coming out. When was that? 5.30. 45 minutes before the murder. Well, it's just a lead, but I thought you ought to know. Mm -hmm. The important thing now is my money. If Mr. Somerset is the murderer, maybe he... Uh, maybe he... Yeah, maybe he. Where can I find him? He's in the phone book. All right, I'll check on him. So long, Daly. Taxi. Wait a minute, Waring. Huh? Oh, Sergeant Corbett. I'll save you a fare. You want to go someplace? I've got a squad car. Well, <laughs> you're too good to me, Corbett. Don't mention it. I want to talk to you anyway. All right, fine. What do we discuss? Existentialism or dialectics? Let's discuss Harold Barnes. Isn't he a pretty dead subject? Very dead. How did you know? It's on the radio. Huh? How did it get on the radio? What's the matter? Haven't you given out a story on it? No. Well, there's a leak someplace. Whole thing's on the air. Time of death and all. Time of death? Yep. 6.15. <clears throat> Waring, you'd better have that radio of yours checked. Could stand a new tube or something. Why? I've got news for you. Barnes wasn't killed at 6.15. No? No, he was killed at 5.30. What's that? That's right, Waring. 5.30. <laughs> Gonna talk? I've been talking. Ever since we got to headquarters. But you haven't said anything. What do you know about the murder? Nothing. You admit you had a fight with Barnes. Yeah, some fight. He slugged me when I wasn't looking. This is not gonna make you love him. All right, so I killed him. You want to sign a confession? You don't have enough rubber hose for that, Corbett. I don't say you pulled the trigger, Waring, but you know something. You're covering for somebody. Now, that's a brilliant piece of deduction. Who is it? No comment. What's with the phony radio yarn you handed me? That's what I want to know. And if you'd stop wasting my time, maybe I could find out. And if you'd cooperate... You'd die of shock. <laughs> I couldn't do it to you, Corbett. I simply couldn't. I ought to book you, Waring. On suspicion? On general principles. But we've just cleaned the jail, so get out of here. <laughs> you say the sweetest things. If this case isn't cracked in 24 hours, I may change my mind. Now beat it. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Waring, come in. Yeah, uh, Daly. Daly, where'd you get the idea Barnes was killed at 6.15? Oh, I told you, the radio. Wasn't on the radio. But I heard it. No, it's no use, Daly. That's too easily checked. Well, uh, I have nothing else to say. You know, chum, when somebody has the facts of a murder before the story is out, it usually means he had something to do with it. But I have an alibi. Uh -huh. So this isn't the usual situation, especially since those facts of yours happen to be incorrect. What do you mean? I mean that the murder didn't take place at 6.15. It didn't? No, it didn't. It happened at 5.30. Oh, 
What? Yes, just the time you admitted being at Bond's. Oh, no, no, there's some mistake. And you made it. I didn't kill him. Well, I don't think you did. You wouldn't have stuck your neck out so far if you had. I'm glad you realized that. Yeah, so that leaves just one explanation. Does it? You mentioned a friend when I first talked to you, Muriel. Yes. Nice girl, you said. She wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> Not much. She'd just trim you out of your savings and then frame you for murder. Well, I... I don't know. It was Muriel, wasn't it? Now, come on, Daly, wasn't it? Stay right where you are, Waring. Don't you move. Oh, dear. How chivalrous can you get? A gun, because I accuse your girl? I trusted her, Waring. I believed her. I... I loved her. As long as you're putting that all in the past tense, why the gun? You don't think I'm going to let her get away with this, do you? You don't need the gun to get even. All we need is your testimony. If we can pin the killing on her... If, if. Well, I'm not going to wait. And I'm not interested in just giving testimony. For once in my life, I'm going to do something. Now, wait a minute, No, you stay right there. This is between me and her. We're going to have it out. And don't you try to follow me. If you do, I'll kill you. I'm not joking, Waring. I'll kill you. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. Well, I'd hate to be in Mike's shoes right now. But then I have a much more pleasant job than Mike's. Yes, I really enjoy telling you about the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. Because I know how good tasting all nine of these fine cheese spreads are. Each one is extra good, and there's a variety to please every taste. There are mild tasting ones like Kraft pineapple cheese spread, and there are sharp tasting kinds too, such as Roca, Smokel, and Kraft cheese and bacon spread. They're all good to eat. And actually good for you, too, because they're wholesome dairy foods made from only the finest, purest ingredients. For easy sandwiches and snacks your folks can help themselves to, keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Gordon Daly took matters and a gun in his own hands. Now he confronts Muriel in her apartment. You cheat, you lying little cheat. Gordon, listen to me. I did listen to you. I let you make a fool of me. You don't understand. I don't understand at last. You were just using me, that's all. Just using me. No, Gordon, if you'd only... Just listen... using me. I thought, I I hoped... It... No, don't you move. Please, Gordon. Now you're going to pay. D- don't kill me. Somebody will hear the shot. You won't get away. You'll be caught. Yes, I'll be caught. Well, I don't care. I'll give myself up. Wait, there's money. A lot of I'm it. not interested in money anymore. Please, Gordon, put down the gun. Please. Yes. Yes, Muriel, I will put down the gun. There. Thank you. I won't need it for what I'm going to do. What do you... No, stay away. Oh! I don't need a gun. Don't. You want me to put my... Hey, uh, Waring, where did you come from? In the window. Now let her go. Thanks, stranger, for giving me a chance to get the gun. Now put up your hands. What? Well, that's gratitude for you. I saved your life. Oh, thanks. All right, Gordon, get up. Yes. Waring, how did you get here? I made sure you didn't follow. Now, you're not too good at the rough stuff, Daly. You shouldn't try it. You left me in your room. Muriel's address is on your phone pad. Oh, of course. When I got here, I knew you wouldn't let me in. That's why I tried the window instead of the door. Well, if you're all through congratulating yourself, maybe you'll tell me what this is all about. Yeah, sure. It's all about your pretty neck, as if you didn't know. Daly wanted to ring it. I wanted to save it so that you can face the murder rap you're trying to pin on him. Murder rap? Now, don't tell me it's news to you. Your frame isn't going to work, Angel. Daly was supposed to put his neck in the noose by admitting he was at Barnes's at 5.30. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we won't argue that. Anyway, so far, he's only said it to me. He didn't tell the police, and if I deny he told me, where's your proof against him? Maybe there isn't any. But aren't you overlooking one thing? What's that? Where's your evidence against me, since you seem to be accusing me? You tried to frame Daly. Can you prove that? I can try. You'll get your chance. We'll see whose story holds up. And don't move, either. What What are you doing? Calling the police. Any objections? being at the murder scene at 5.30, Sergeant. That's why he tried to kill me. No, that's not it. Daly, I... you and Waring both admit you tried to kill the girl. Well, I... 
I lost my head. Sure, just like you lost it when you killed Barnes. But, Corbett, can't you see... Yeah, Waring, I see you're trying to build up Daly as a nice, innocent little sucker. So what's a nice, innocent little sucker doing with a gun? I I told you, Sergeant. Muriel, she gave it to me. She told me Peter Somerset might try to harm me because I accused him, and I needed to protect myself. Sergeant, you don't believe... You bet I don't believe. Waring gives me a lot of double talk. Now he admits he was covering for Daly. He admits Daly pulled a gun on him, and the gun turns out to be the murder weapon. Murder weapon? That's what Ballistic says. So, with a gun, with a second murder attempt, with Waring's double talk, no, no, there's only one answer this time. Can't you see it's a frame? Did you ever see a murderer who wasn't being framed, Waring? But the girl told him what to do. She didn't tell him to pull a gun on you. She didn't tell him to try to strangle her. She didn't tell you to hold back on me. Her story makes sense. Yours and Daly's still doesn't. All right, Corbett, you win. But do you know how much I win, Waring? What? I could hold you, too, for obstructing justice, and don't think I wouldn't love it. Oh, 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 come now, Corbett. I know that behind that stony facade, there beats a heart of granite. Keep up the bright dialogue, chum. <laughs> but you've just got one out. Otherwise, I throw the book at you. And what's my out? You sign a statement saying Daly admitted to you he was at Barnes at 5.30. All right, Corbett. No, no, Waring, don't. The truth, Daly. But it'll clinch the case. I, I don't mind about myself, but this means Muriel will go free. She'll get away with everything. What can I do? Go ahead, Corbett. Have the statement typed out. I'll sign it. Oh, it's you. Well, that's a friendly greeting, Muriel. Still haven't forgiven me for saving your life. I still haven't forgiven you for trying to pin a murder on me. Oh, well, we all make mistakes. I signed the statement tying it to Daly, didn't I? When you couldn't help yourself. What do you want? In? Sorry, I'm busy. Doing what? What's it to you? I thought I might help. No, thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Waring. Uh, Not so fast. I... I happen to be interested in you, Muriel. Thanks again, but it's still goodbye. In fact, I'm so interested, I've been following you ever since they threw Daly in the can. What's that? You see, I knew this was more than a murder. Barnes was working a neat swindle. Must have collected quite a bundle. But the police had searched his place and Daly's. No dough. What am I supposed to do? Well, I haven't given up on you, Angel. That's why I've been hanging around. A little while ago, you received a parcel post package. What was in it? You tell me. Okay, I'll make a stab at it. You mailed the swindle money to yourself. Let Uncle Sam hold it for you while the heat was on. Nice guessing. Where does it get you? I'd like to see the package. You'd like to take a walk. All right. I'll be back with Sergeant Corbett. No, you don't. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. No guns, Angel. Let go. Not yet. Let Let me have that. You're trying to pull this just about clinches things, Muriel. You can't prove anything. I've proved enough to get Sergeant Corbett up here with a search warrant. That ought to wrap things up. Let's go phone him, shall we? While wearing, I thought you'd let me down. Oh, for a while, I had to, Daly. Well, you worked with Sergeant Corbett before. Wasn't there any way you could convince him? Sure, by getting proof. That's what I did. And in the meantime, I had to sit in jail. Well, it wasn't worth it to save you 15 grand? Not to mention your neck? It was worth it to get even with Muriel. <laughs> you sure are one for revenge? Well, eh? I think of how much I love that woman. I... Well, I still do, I guess. That's why I hate her so much. Well, that makes sense. It does. Well... At least I've learned my lesson. From now on, I'm through with women. They, they, they're they nothing but trouble. That That's all they are, wearing trouble. Uh-huh. Well, I've got to be going. Oh, yes? Where? Oh, just out looking for trouble. Good night, Daly. For the best in taste in the margarine you buy, get parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, parquet is the margarine millions prefer to any other because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. In states where the law permits, get yellow parquet in its wonderful new flavor saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the regular package or handy color quick bag. In any package, parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Get a pound tomorrow. The Case 
of the mighty muscle. The Case of the Mighty Muscle. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that some people don't need a moving van to move in. A little Colt 45 can carry a lot more weight. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Gene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place, the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, and Judy Holliday visit the big show today on NBC. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Louise. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. Some boy I know thinks committing murder is a sure way to make a fortune. And unless I can convince him otherwise, he's going to make a stab at it. <laughs> This is Jack Costello, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Mighty Muscle. Friends, before we join the Falcon for his latest adventure, I want to tell you about the handiest little menu helpers a homemaker can have in her kitchen. They're the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. Everyone so handy for quick, easy snacks and sandwiches, appetizers, and salad toppings. They're creamy, mild-tasting Kraft cheese spreads and sharp-tasting varieties, too. All delicious, all of the finest quality, because they're made by Kraft. Tomorrow when you shop, get several of the nine famous cheese spreads by Kraft. And now, the case of the mighty muscle. It's early Sunday morning, and the streets of Manhattan are deserted, save for a broad-shouldered young man named Al Compton, who strolls down East 86th Street and heads for home. But unknown to Mr. Compton, he has company. Twenty feet behind him is a tall, lean gent who matches him step for step. And only after Compton has gone two blocks is he aware of his shadow. All right, friend, what's the idea? You're speaking to me? Yes, why are you tailing me? Tailing? Well, why should I want to do a thing like this? That's what I want to know. Uh, you're imagining things, Mr. Compton. Yeah? And how come you know my name? Oh, well, you're a celebrity. Everybody knows Ken Brady and the fellow he's grooming to follow in his footsteps. Why, it's one of the big success stories of our time. Who do you think you're kidding? Okay, Compton, I'll put it to you straight. You going right home? Why? A friend of mine wants to talk to you. Who? Nick Daniels. What does Daniels want with me? Oh, then you've heard of the boss. Maybe. And you know that Daniels ain't no two-bit up. I know his territory is Indianapolis. What's he doing in New York? That's what he wants to talk to you about. I got a car around the corner. I'm sorry. I never take rides with strangers. Look, Compton, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep on walking and heaven bless you. But Daniels said, Eddie, you bring Compton to my place so you see the position that puts me That's in. That's your tough luck. Oh, no, friend. It's yours. Oh. You must really enjoy your work, Eddie. What'd you hit him with? Hey, Nick. I heard it. You think it could be the cops? No, Brady wouldn't have missed him this fast. You want me? No, 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 no. I'll take care of it. You look after our friend here. Just a second. I'm coming. Hello, Nick. What are you doing here, Claire? I thought I left you in Indianapolis. 
Well, you're such an irresistible creature, I had to follow you. I want to talk to you. You'll have to pick another time. I'm all jammed up. With what? Oh. Well, well. What goes on under our little roof? That's none of your business. Now, will you leave? Isn't that handsome hunk of man on the bed Al Compton? Didn't I tell you to beat it? All right, darling, if you don't want me to stay. Ah, uh, hold it, Claire. I changed my mind. <laughs> I thought that was a woman's prerogative. You wouldn't be thinking of going up to see his boss, Ken Brady, would you? Would you mind? Very much. You don't want to jump to conclusions, Claire. Mr. Compton just dropped into chat. He had a couple too many, and he passed out. That hard stuff is awful, isn't it? Especially when you get it from the end of a blackjack. Now, listen, Claire. Sure. What's it worth to you? What's what worth to me? Keeping my mouth shut. A thousand dollars. Oh, now, Nick. Now, make up your mind, baby. If you don't want it, that's all right with me, too. Now, don't be cheap, darling. After all, in your bracket, how much can you keep? Anyway? I said I'll give you a grand. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Though I'd like to try for two. Look, Nick, you're going to talk all night with that dame we got worked through. Just a second, Eddie. Listen, Claire, I want you to take a little walk for a while. Come back in a couple of hours. 4.30 be all right? A uh, five will be even better. And you'll have that money ready. I said I would. Okay, Eddie, get him up. Yeah. Come on, Compton, wake up. Let me alone. Come on, you can go back to sleep after the boss talks to you. Huh? Hello, Compton. Oh, you're Nick Daniels, aren't you? That's right. I'm awfully sorry about this fellow, but I had to talk oh, to you. You no good. Sit down. Now, I've got a proposition for you, Compton. I'm not interested. Why don't you hear me out? I've been doing a little checking up on you. They told me you're Brady's fair-haired boy. Treat you like his own son. So? So I'm going to show you how to commercialize on it. Now, I'd like to open up a couple of gambling clubs around town. Now you're crazy. You think Brady would stand for it while he's in the business? That's just it. He's not going to be in business much longer. What do you mean? We're going to knock off his club regularly. What? Yes. And uh, when his customers see the rough stuff that goes on, I don't think they'll be flocking there anymore. You're out of your mind, Daniels. You don't think it'll work? No, we got spotters all over the place. It's armed like a fortress. How are you going to get your boys past the guards? That's where you come in. You think I'd sell out Brady after all he's done? I think you'd sell out your own mother if the price were right. Look, you can take your money. Well, who's talking about money? There are other things in life besides that. You're not making sense. Ever hear of a man named Sam Richards? No. Funny. I found a guy in Mobile who's willing to identify you as the lad who killed Richards in a fight over some girl. That's a lie. Seems this friend of mine was living across the street and saw the whole thing from his window. You're bluffing. You think so? Well, take a look at these pictures. Where did you get them? Oh, I forgot to mention that this friend of mine is a camera enthusiast, and he thought a picture of you bending over the body might come in here. Well, you're not frightening me, Daniels. Brady knows all about that mess. Yeah, but the cops don't. What do you say, Compton? Do you cooperate? When would I get the pictures? Don't give them a thought. I'll deliver right after you do. <laughs> So you see the spot I'm in. Either way, I'm a dead duck. What does this Nick Daniels have on you? Oh, that's unimportant. It can't be if you told him you'd cooperate. Listen, Judy, I swear all this happened long before I ever met you. Then why can't you tell me what it is? I just can't, that's all. Just take my word for it that Daniels wasn't sounding off. If I double-cross him, it can mean my life. Well, what are you going to do? Well, what can I do? When I came to New York, I was a bum. Brady took a liking to me. He gave me a job. You mean you're going to tell him about Nick Daniels? Yes. Oh, no, you can't do that, Al. You got a better idea? Yes, why don't we leave town? How far do you think we'd get? Daniels probably has a boy now watching the hotel. Then, then why don't you do what Daniels wants? Brady would never suspect Will you. you forget it? If you really loved me, I I'd... do. Then don't say anything to Brady. Just get out of my way, Judy. No. I won't let you go, Al. You can't stop me. I can try. Oh. Al. Al! <laughs> Nobody here. No. Yeah? 
Let me talk to Mike Waring, please. Ain't here. What's the matter, kid? Did I wake you? Oh, that's a pretty ridiculous question, Corbett. What do you want? Now, that's no way to talk to a guy who's going to do you a favor. Look, Sergeant, I don't like guys doing me favors at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, Mike, if you don't want to meet her. What are you babbling about? I just picked up a little number who's out of her mind to meet the Falcon. You interested? Nope. She's blonde, 5 feet 2. I said I wasn't interested. figure in... that would put Venus to shame. Oh. What's her name? Judy Wainwright. Never heard of her. You will. She just killed Al Compton. Ken Brady's boy? That's right. She wants to hire you. Is that why you called me? Yeah. Well, tell Miss Wainwright I'm not interested. Ah, you're being smart, Mike. What do you mean? Well, strictly between you and me and the guy who's hiding under your racing form, this little girl hasn't got a prayer. Not a chance, huh? No. She's up the well-known creek without a paddle. I bet the jury won't take 20 minutes to strap her into the chair... Want to hear the story she tried to give us? No, never mind, Sergeant. You always foul up a story. Tell Miss Wainwright I'll be over to hear it myself. This is Jack Costello again, friends. While Mike is on his way to listen to Judy Wainwright's story, I have a little success story I'd like to tell you. It's about a hostess I know who helped make her latest party a special success by serving extra delicious appetizers. Here's how she made them. She took small strips of dried beef, spread them with Kraft's tempting relish cheese spread, and then just rolled them up jelly roll fashion. Good eating? I should say so. Mighty good eating. And of course, it's no wonder because Kraft relish cheese spread has a flavor that's delightfully mild and yet tantalizing. And it's smooth, creamy smooth, for easy spreading, too. And like all nine Kraft cheese spreads, Kraft Relish is a wholesome dairy food made from only the finest, purest ingredients. Kraft spreads are perfect for appetizers and for between-meal snacks and sandwiches, too. Try Kraft Pimento, Roca, Kraft Pineapple. In fact, try all nine grand varieties. Look for them in gay, colorful, tulip-designed drinking glasses you can use again and again. And remember, Kraft cheese spreads are America's favorites because they're so delicious. Tomorrow, get several of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Sergeant Corbett, acting at the behest of Judy Wainwright, got in touch with Mike Waring. And now at a local jail, while the Falcon listens, Miss Wainwright talks for herself. You've got to believe me, Mr. Waring. I didn't kill Al. Then how come you didn't see the murderer? Because my back was to the door. And you didn't hear it open? No. How do you explain the gun being found in the room? The killer must have thrown it in. Mm -hmm. How did your fingerprints get on it? Oh, I don't remember. I... I was so dazed, I probably picked it up without thinking. And you weren't so dazed that you couldn't pack a bag and head for the nearest bus line where the cops grabbed you. I tell you, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You had a fight with Compton, didn't you? No. I was crazy about it. And how come the people next door heard you arguing? Corbett tells me they heard Compton say he was walking out on you and you wouldn't let him go. That's a lie. Did you or didn't you say you were going to stop him? What is this, a third degree? Just what side are you on, Mr. Waring? I haven't decided yet. Well, if that's the way you feel, I'll get someone else. Falcon's not the only private detective in town. Okay, Angel. No hard feelings. Hey, Sergeant. No. Wait, Mr. Waring. Yeah? I'll tell you anything you want to know. Okay. Suppose we start with the last question I asked. Well, Al and I were arguing. But it wasn't over what you think. Al worked for Ken Brady. You're not telling me anything new. Well... Late last night, a man came to Al with a proposition. Either Al helped him ruin Brady's club, or else. Or else what? I don't know. It was blackmail of some sort. What was Compton's decision? He was going to tell Brady the whole story, even though it meant his life. That's why I wouldn't let him go. Mm -hmm. And would you know the name of the party who tried to blackjack him into line? Yes. It it was Nick Daniels. Oh, the gentleman from Indianapolis? I think so. Do you know him? No, but I've always wanted to, and this may be my chance. Hey, Sergeant, I want out. (laughs) 
Want me to get that, Nick? Don't trouble yourself, Claire. No trouble at all. Hello? Yes, just a minute. It's your Indianapolis call, Nick. The operator says she's ready with Wilson. Uh, just tell him I won't need those strong-arm men I asked him for. Anything else? No, just say I'll be back in a couple of days. All right. Go right on, Claire. I'll take care of it. Hello, Wilson. Nick asked me to relay some dope to you. Yeah, about those men. Look. Hello, Nick. Do I know you? Oh, not like you're going to. My name is Mike Waring. Oh, the Falcon. Mm -hmm. What do you want with me? Well, I'm working for a girl named Judy Wainwright. I don't believe I know her. She was engaged to Al Compton. Oh, too bad it was broken. Then you know he was murdered, huh? Sure, I heard it on the radio. Sad, wasn't it? Yes, very. But doesn't it strike you strange that he should be knocked off right after you worked on him to double-cross Brady? Who told you that? Little Birdie. What's this little Birdie's name? <laughs> what difference does that make? He's got a long tongue. Maybe somebody ought to pull it out. <laughs> Eddie. Yeah. Fresh game. Right. Get your hands off me. Shut up. Nick, what are you doing? I said, get your hands off me. I heard you the first time. Why, oh, you... I had... Come on, break it up. Let go. I said, break it up. Quit playing around, Eddie. Use the sack. No, you don't. I, I can't. He's got my arm. Well, in that case, I guess I'll have to take a hand. You all right, Eddie? My arm feels like he tore it out of its socket. It's dirty. Make him stop, Nick. I'll fix him. Cut it out, Eddie. Waring. Waring. He's out cold. Give me that vase. You're not going to hit him with it. Will you shut up? <laughs> Lift his head up, Eddie. Right. That's fine. No. <coughs> no, don't. It's only water, Waring. It can't hurt you. <coughs> Want a drink? No. Suit yourself. Who told you about my deal with Al Compton? That's none of your... Oh, for heaven's sake, Nick, stop it. I told you to keep out of this, Claire. Well, Mr. Waring? You don't think I'd tell you? Sure I do. Well, you're going to be disappointed. Okay, Eddie. Take off his shoes. Hey, what's the idea? I'm going to show you how we make it hot for guys like you back in Indianapolis. Nick, you wouldn't. No? Well, watch and see. You got a match, Eddie? Sure. No. Nick! Well? He still ain't talking, Nick. What'd you come out for? Go back in there with Claire and work on him till he does. That's no use. He's out cold from the looks of it. He will be for another three or four hours. Oh, that's fine. Now, how am I going to find out who told him I got to Compton? Maybe he just guessed it. No, no, no. You don't guess things like that, Eddie. Somebody's been talking out of turn. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was Claire. Maybe. And then again, maybe it was you. Well, what kind of a crack is that? Claire started to make a grand of things had broken, right? So take it any way you like. All right, Nick, as long as you mentioned it. Where do I stand in this deal? I told you that before. Before things were different. I was supposed to get 5% of everything you made in New York. So? So right now, the best you can hope for is to keep your health. If Brady ever hears of this stunt, you won't live long enough to regret it. Where does that leave me? The same place it leaves me? Well, not quite. You got dough. I haven't. That's tough. But only on you. What's the idea of the gun, Eddie? I want 10 grand for my trouble. What? You heard me. I haven't got it here. You don't hand me that. I'll let you look at my wallet. I'm fresh out. It cost me plenty to start operating. You've got plenty more in your safe. Sure, but that's down in the office. All right, let's go to the office. Okay, Annie. When a fellow's got something coming to him, I'd be the last one to stop him from getting it. Uh, let me get my coat. <laughs> Take it easy, Hanson. You're going to be all right. Oh, who are you? You're not being very flattering, Mr. Waring. I was kind of hoping you noticed me when you first came in. Oh, I did. <laughs> you had me worried for a minute. I thought I was slipping. Uh, and what time is it? Quarter of nine. You mean I've been alone here for almost three hours? Not alone, honey. I've been keeping you company. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> what's your name, Angel? Claire. Now, what's the rest of it? Ames. Miss Claire Ames. 
Since when has it been Miss? Hmm? It wasn't so long ago you were wearing a wedding ring there. Who told you that? Oh, I'm clairvoyant. Besides, you still got a band of white on your left hand. Oh. Yeah, see how simple it is? Uh, who was the lucky man? What difference does it make? Because I've got a feeling it was Nick Daniels. How did you know that? Oh, just a hunch. You still married to the guy? Yes, but don't give up hope, Hanson. I don't think it'll last. I've been thinking of Reno for quite a while. How would Nick like that? He wouldn't. How'd you get into this mess, anyway? Nick promised me $1,000 if I'd help him, and I needed the money. Mm -hmm. Did he and Eddie kill Al Compton? Use your head. What was their percentage? Compton was their boy. Well, where are they now? They left about two hours ago from Nick's office. What do they do with my shoes? Don't be a fool, Waring. You can't hobble around in your condition. You just lie still. I'll get a doctor. Oh, uh, don't you bother. I'll live through it. Too bad I can't say as much for your husband. Where's Nick's office, Claire? Last one down the hall. Uh, look, Mike, what's your interest in this case? Well, isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Al Compton's murderer. Why? Because I've got a client named Judy Wainwright. The police think did it. I see. Do you? Yes. So that's where the leak was, huh? That's how you knew that Nick approached Compton. Uh-huh. And the police think that your client is guilty. Yep. What makes you so sure she isn't? Oh, I don't know. Call a blind faith. I wish I could find someone to believe in me that way. Well, maybe we could work out a deal. Maybe. Uh, this the place? Yes. Who's the Star Trading Company? That's the name Nick is using in New York. Oh. Well, I guess there's nobody... What's the matter? I spoke too soon. The door's open. Uh, where's the light switch? I've got it. Well, awfully careless of Mr. Nick Daniels to leave his office in this condition. Hmm? Well, doesn't it strike you as being sloppy? No. Well, obviously, we both can't be looking at the same thing. Now, the first thing I noticed was that open closet... And the next thing I saw... Eddie! Yes, that's who it is, Claire. Well, what's wrong with him? Just to mention one thing, he's dead. Hand me the phone, Angel. i got to call the police. Eighty-six precinct, Sergeant Corbett speaking. Hello, Corbett, this is Mike Waring. Well, where have you been keeping yourself, friend? Your client's been asking for you. Well, you tell Miss Wainwright she's got nothing to worry about. I'll be down in five minutes with the proof that she didn't kill Compton. What do you call proof? I just found Eddie Nichols' body. Say that again. I just found Eddie Nichols' body. Nick Daniels' boy. Someone let him have a butcher knife right in the back. Where'd you find him? In Nick's office. How do you figure that clears Miss Wainwright? I'll explain it all when I see you, Sergeant. But it stands to reason the same party who killed Al Compton killed Eddie. I still don't see how that gives the girl an out. Oh, come off it. What's wrong with you, Corbett? Eddie's been dead for less than an hour. And for the last five, you've had my client under lock and key. I guess again, Miss Wainwright raised ten grand worth of bail at seven o'clock tonight. That was three hours ago. You're joking. If you think so, wait till you hear the payoff. The guy who put up the dough was a gentleman named Nick Daniels. Ain't that enough to kill you? <laughs> This is Jack Costello again, friends, and I'd like to say a few words about those nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. That's right, I said nine. There's a variety to please every taste. There are the creamy, mild-tasting ones like Kraft pineapple cheese spread, Kraft olive pimento, and Kraft relish. And there are sharp-tasting kinds, too, such as Kraft Limburger, Smokel, and Kraft cheese and bacon spread. All of them are delicious and good for you, too because they're wholesome dairy foods made from only the finest, purest ingredients. For easy sandwiches and snacks, keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Mike Waring received the news that Judy Wainwright's bail was furnished by Nick Daniels. And now, with the gorgeous Mrs. Daniels in tow, the Falcon tries to locate the good deeder. Listen, Claire. 
You're sure Daniels wouldn't go anyplace but this apartment? Well, it's either here or his office. But the doorman said he hasn't been back since he left. Yes. Obviously, he knew whereof he spoke. Well, I guess the only thing to do is to uh, sit and wait. Well, that seems like a smart idea. Want a drink? No mind if I do. Say when. When? Here's to what we both want. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, does Nick have a hotel suite anywhere? Not that I know of. Well, where could he have taken Judy? Why are you so worried about her? You don't know how important that little lady is in my scheme of things. You think she killed Compton and Eddie? Well, well I... Well, do you, Mr. Waring? Judy, where's Nick? Right behind her. Huh? So try anything funny and you know what'll happen. Why don't you let him bail you out, Judy? I thought you sent him. You'll forgive me for using your name, friend. How did you find out about her? I'm a gambler wearing. I play hunches. This one paid off right on the nose. Oh. Speaking of hunches, Nick, I've got a honey of my own. Yeah? Yeah. I've got a feeling that one of the things you're not expecting is this. Get Why, down, Judy. You... That's not nice, Nick. Ah, drop that gun. Come on, drop it. Ah, cut it out. You're breaking my arm. And I'm going to start on your neck. Ah, what is it? Mike, stop it. Let go of me, Claire. You'll kill him. That's the general idea. Come on, Nick, get up. Let him be, Mike. He didn't kill Al Compton. No. No. How would he know Compton was going to double-cross him and tell Brady? I tell you, Nick had no motive. Who said he did? What? I never claimed he had a motive, Claire. I just don't like this guy on general principles. I don't get you. No. I'll see if this is any better. You killed Al Compton. You're crazy. And what's more, you killed Eddie Nichols when he stumbled on the truth. You let go of me. Now, don't struggle, Angel. Because now that I've finished with Mr. Daniels, I'd just as soon start on his missus. <laughs> villain of the piece. Mm-hmm. But why did she kill Al? She had nothing against him. Well, that's what made this almost a perfect crime, Judy. She had no motive, but her husband did. You mean it was a frame? That's right, Angel. You see, if Claire played ball with her husband, all she stood to gain was $1,000. But if Nick went to the chair for the murder of Al and Eddie, then as his widow... She stood to come into a fortune. Now, nah, you got it. While I was out cold, she followed Eddie and her husband to the office, where she let Eddie have it. And... You mean to tell me Nick just stood by and did nothing? <laughs> uh, what was your reaction when you saw Al die? Oh. As I recall, you were a little on the bewildered side. Yes, that's true. Well, the same thing happened to Nick. But didn't Claire say she was with you while Eddie and Nick were gone? Well, what could you expect her to do, break down and confess? After that going over I got, I was in no condition to tell whether or not she was lying. Well, I still find it hard to believe she was in that hotel room while I was arguing with Al. Well, why? You were both so worked up, you didn't notice the door open. Oh, now admit it. You're guessing. No, no. She had to be in that room, Judy. You see, she knew something she never could have known otherwise. That Al was planning to double-cross Nick by telling his boss the whole story. Now, Nick didn't know that. The only reason he was giving up the scheme of breaking Brady was that, with Al dead, it didn't stand a chance of working. Now, is it clear? Mm, I see. Good. I only wish there was some way I could pay you for all you've done. Oh, there is. How? Well, I don't think this is the proper time to go into that. <laughs> Why not? Well, a private detective likes to keep his fees strictly between him and his client, and uh, I've got a feeling we're being overheard. Wait till we're alone, huh? This is Boy Scout Week, the 41st anniversary of the beginning of the Boy Scout movement in America. All over the country, special scout activities are in progress including Scout Open Houses, to which the public is invited. The Kraft Foods Company salutes the Boy Scouts and urges all America to support this character-building work among our youth. Why not get in touch with your local Scout organization this week? Drop in and get acquainted with the Scouts, their leaders, and their program. The Case of the Superfluous Murder. The Case of the Superfluous Murder. That's the title of next week's adventure of The Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that if a woman wants something badly enough, not even murder will stand in the way. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting adventure of The Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. 
The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear The Great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time and the place. The Great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Jack Costello speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Groucho Marx joins Tallulah Bankhead's big show today. Be sure to hear it on NBC.